How's it going, everybody? So I believe this will be my fourth uh, dietary adjustment or check-in video, if you want to call it, uh, leading up to my competition prep. And um, today, basically, we are going to go over the conclusion of my mini cut and uh, talk about how that went. So let's get started. All right. What we do every week, let me just get myself in the corner there. What we do every week, go over the spreadsheets first. So um, this week went great. Um, this is the consolidated one. The one you've been seeing was my one year. And it's funny because uh, I actually ran out um, like literally to the day at the end of my mini cut. Um, so this is one year of uh, periodized massing and mini cutting and cutting um, all laid out. It's really cool to see it kind of finally, um, you know, kind of plotted on a chart. This was a mini cut here, a mass phase, maintenance phase, a conventional cut, mass phase, mini cut, and then we are now moving into mass. So um, this week, weight right on target. I started the mini cut around 255 pounds and ended the mini cut at 239 pounds. Um, didn't really watch the averages too much because the weight loss is so fast that it's hard to watch averages. Uh, goal rate uh, or goal, goal weight loss was, I believe, around 12 and a half pounds, and I did 15 just to be a little bit uh, on the safe side, just to attenuate some body water loss and things like that. Um, it's actually funny. Um, I wanted to touch on this, and I can go into the macros here too, but uh, you notice how I lost weight here. Sunday, I essentially told myself, like, hey, you went pretty hard. You, you're right at your goal on the dot. You know, you can have some food. And uh, it's really funny because a lot of the time when you're in a diet, you're like, oh, yeah, like, I'll have that when the diet's over. And um, my, like, food obsession was just so low. Um, I wasn't very hungry this whole time. Like, a, part of which could be the food selection, part of which my psychology around dieting has changed as well. Um, and I was pretty busy with work um, on this day. But, you know, I had some free food and whatnot, and um, I ended up waking up a pound less, which I'm pretty happy about because I was kind of teetering with the idea of, like, you know, pushing in another day. Anyway, um, that was cool. <clears throat> and then as far as macro tracking, this last week I kind of went a little bit more on the conservative side just to make sure I hit my target rate of loss. So I averaged uh, 2,500 calories here, and, I mean, I guess I did the week prior as well. So, um yeah, and this is that day where generally I would have brought the calories down a little bit more. This was my rest day. And I just kind of I had like a burger and I just made sure I tracked everything and uh, was able to actually go down a pound in weight. As far as food selection, I um, mostly had for my carbohydrate sources, I basically picked the most satiating per calorie carbohydrates. So I had mostly potatoes, oatmeal, um, strawberries because they you can eat a large volume and they're a very low amount of calories. Per gram, um, so lots of fruit, potatoes, and oatmeal for my main carbohydrate sources. And then um, beef and eggs for most of my protein sources. And um, fats were ancillary just coming from um, my food selection, uh, from the, the red meat and the eggs. And uh, basically just ate mostly whole foods. Had a big salad at the end of the day. Um, I also kind of... Um, listen to hunger cues. So meaning if I wasn't hungry in the morning, I wouldn't eat or maybe I'd have a protein shake before going to the gym, which is actually nice because I was doing a lot more heavy compound lifting. Um, so I didn't have as much pressure on my stomach and I wasn't digesting food when I was training. So it was pretty pleasant. I probably will just keep that strategy going into the uh, conventional cut for my prep. Uh, this was really cool to collect a lot of that data and uh, make a lot of notes on things that worked and didn't. And I probably will just use this kind of format for my conventional cut. Um, so it was really cool. It was a really cool peek into dieting. Um, I was really just every time, and I mentioned this in the last week's video, every time I diet, my gratitude meter just goes through the roof. And, um, I just found myself like just really appreciative for everything around me. And I, and I just more so, um, you know, think about those things when I'm dieting, just because things are put into perspective when you don't have, you know, surplus of food and, uh, you just become more grateful for everything. And, uh, I am really grateful for the position that I'm in, the 
Um, on the dieting side, how I was saying it's so easy. Part of that is because I've chosen to educate myself on, you know, more evidence-based dieting practices. And uh, I'm really grateful that I found that path and that I've stuck to it. And I've learned as much as I have. And I've just stuck to bodybuilding for as long as I have. Um, it's just been really cool. It's been really cool to see out what I can do and the power that I have, um, especially when I actually understand what drives a lot of these processes and, and how to do them appropriately with, um, you know, a scientific approach. And, um, you know, another way that that is shown is through my pictures and the actual change that I had. So if you go down here, um, really got some detail coming out of my hamstrings this week. Um, quads as well. Waist just came in. I um, Actually, here, let's go to the data collection. So, yeah, my waist dropped... Uh, three quarters of an inch, which is pretty significant for one week. And this is pretty um, on par with like how my waist normally drops. Like I've had this conversation before with some people, but basically like uh, a part of the reason in which I chose to pursue bodybuilding um, was I was working out and I had gotten into like Arnold and stuff. And I noticed a very, and this is kind of, you know, weird and off tangent, but um, I noticed that I had a very similar structure to Arnold um, just as far as rib cage and waist and, and, um, and I, was, I, I kind of could see before I got into bodybuilding that I had some structural um, advantages and um, big rib cage, small waist. Um, and then further into that, I also learned that my legs were a very uh, strong point and had really good sweeps. Um, and kind of putting all that together, I chose to just kind of put my head down and say, hey, look, if you continue to work at this, like you might have the potential to have a good bodybuilding physique at some point. Um, and one of those things that always comes down when I diet and I've always been genetically just gifted with is a really small waist um, to where this, this measurement will probably drop a significant amount um, during prep. And if I can manage that while maintaining my muscle size, um, the proportions I get are pretty nutty um, just with the big rib cage and the lats sitting on the rib cage. Uh, so I'm really excited to see that out. And it was really cool to see that being actualized. And I'll go back to the photos in a sec. And then um, caliper site was the same. Blood pressure within range. Heart rate, good. Fasting glucose, good. Um, hunger was lower this week. As reflected there, energy level was a little bit lower. I had to drink more caffeine. Also drank that for some of the, you know, hopefully cutting some of the hunger. Uh, farm stayed the same. We're going to continue this through the deload week. And then I will uh, update you guys on that next week on what I plan on doing with the blast. And, um, yeah, so back to the photos. So yeah, three quarter inch drop in the waist. I'm not taking measurements everywhere else. It's kind of tedious, but uh, you can definitely notice detail in the back and the hamstrings. You know, you can see my glutes starting to come in here on the side as well. Hamstring, definitely more, um, definition in the waist. Um, but yeah, you can really see it's very pronounced with like the weight, uh, the waist difference. And, uh, here I'll show you the comparisons from the start of the mini cut. So now, hopefully I don't have anything inappropriate in my photos. really doubt it. usually just have photos of myself. Look at that. Okay, so that's from last week, actually. Yeah, nothing inappropriate as far as I can tell. Okay, here's the absolute change from the start of the mini cut. 255 on the left, 239 on the right. Uh, as you can see, waist, quads, everything like that. And, um, you know, to some extent, I'm going to be getting flatter throughout this. And you can see that I'm a little bit flatter. I lost some of my pop, uh, which is going to be really cool to see when I fill out uh, in about two to three weeks when everything is in the right places. I think it's going to look kind of freaky, to be honest. And I'm really excited for that. So, yeah, same places. Um, got lean. Definitely waist, for sure. The hamstrings just really, really came out. Um, that's not it. Yeah. Waste really came out here. Uh, again, I, I, I do believe, not to blow smoke up my own ass, but I do believe that this will be pretty crazy just with how small my waist is, how much mass I have put onto my lats and my arms, and the legs have always been there for the most part. Um, I kind of hit this shot a little bit weird, but you can still see the uh, hamstring definition there. This shot looks way better. It probably was a little bit more twisted, but definitely looking really solid there, and uh, that's about it. So yeah, really not much else to talk about. Oh yeah, actually, um, I'm going back to uh, this week to drop off fatigue. I'm going back to um, no, going back to maintenance calories. My uh, pre mini cut maintenance calories. Um, when considering going back 
So a lot of people may want to try to preserve the leanness from the mini cut, but you got to remember why you're doing a mini cut in the first place. It is to potentiate weight gain. So, um, and then I need to also drop fatigue before I head into another training cycle. You cannot effectively drop fatigue when you are in a deficit and especially a really steep deficit such as a mini cut. So um, basically I'm going to the maintenance, ca maintenance calories that I calculated my mini cut off of, my pre mini cut maintenance I'm going back to. What likely will happen is my weight will shoot up in proportion to when I initially lost it. That is okay. Um, I will likely recomp because what will happen is I will also be adding farm back in the, the week following. Um, and then I will, after a couple weeks, start to, excuse me, calculate out my rate of gain for a 0.25 to 0.5% rate of gain per week of total body weight. Um, so I'll start to adjust calories from there, but I, for now, two to three weeks, ride out that maintenance. Um, you know, I'm going to have some free meals, try to enjoy food a little bit more. As I noticed, I kind of just wasn't doing that before and I have, you know, contest prep coming up. So I need to, you know, have some meals out with my girlfriend and live a little bit more normally. Um, just so that when I get into contest prep, I can focus and, and not feel like I'm missing out or anything like that. Um, so yeah, pre-minute mini cut maintenance calories. I believe I already put some in here. It was 4,800 calories. It's really funny. I was eating that today and I was like, man, I forgot how much food I actually eat. Like it feels wrong. Um, cause you know, I built up to that over time. It feels wrong to eat this amount of food. Like I'm like, man, if I wasn't, you know, if I didn't build up to this, I would literally be obese eating this many calories. Like it's just so much food and so much shoveling of food. Um, the thing is though, but prior to this mini cut, I didn't actually have issues with appetite. Um, it's likely that these carbohydrates are going to, so they were, uh, actually over, this is my maintenance calories. My carbohydrates were at a thousand prior to doing this mini cut. It's likely they're going to get up to like 1200. Um, I've never eaten that much food in my life. Um, and it's going to reflect in my physique. I'm pretty confident with that. Um, so I'm like really excited to see what this next two massing phases brings. Um, but yeah, man, it just feels wrong and I'll do a, I'll probably, uh, I'm ed editing the mini cut uh, day in the life now, and then I'll do uh, a day in the life of my massing um, so you guys can see what I actually eat. So I'll have that up in a couple weeks once uh, everything normalizes. So probably a month actually at this point. Um, but yeah, it feels weird. Um, and I almost didn't want to stop the mini cut, but we got a goal in mind. We got some masks to put on before the competition season starts. So, um, you know, just going to stay at it, continue to be consistent, hitting all my targets really definitely built some uh, self-efficacy and some confidence by executing this mini cut so well. And I'm just going to use that momentum moving forward and execute my mass perfectly and hit the show in July. Super excited. Uh, if you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Hope you're enjoying these. Um, you know, if you're not, then you don't have to watch them, but I'm just going to continue to do them. And it's going to be really cool because I have a log of all of my stuff. And there are probably at least a few of you out there who actually learned something from these or get some insight into my adjustment process and my thought process. So for those of you who watch, I really do appreciate it. And I'll uh, talk to you guys next week.